Commemorative events, including mem memorials, were held in Japan and elsewhere ahead of the third anniversary of the March 11th earthquake, tsunami, and nuclear disaster. Mokito. A memorial service took place in the city of Rikuzen Takata in Iwate Prefecture, where about 1,600 people lost their lives in the tragedy. I cannot help but feel sympathy for those who died before they could achieve their ambitions. It's hard to believe. Time has passed so fast. After three years, I have yet to settle down my emotions. I should move forward and live life as fully as possible for my lost relatives. In the city of Kesenuma in Miyagi Prefecture, mourners gathered on the rooftop of a fish market that was seriously damaged by the tsunami. Participants included members of a fisherman's cooperative. A representative expressed his determination to rebuild the local fishing industry. A memorial service was also held in Los Angeles, which is home to many Japanese Americans. About 350 people took part. A nuclear meltdown following the massive earthquake and tsunami destroyed a peaceful daily life of two million. We haven't forgotten and our hearts go out to the people. It's been very, very emotional. And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that that things will improve now. In Tokyo, people against the use of nuclear power staged a protest march around the Diet Building. Commemorative ceremonies continued into the evening. People from all over Japan had sent 2,500 lanterns to Natori City in Miyagi Prefecture, bearing messages wishing for recovery. People in Japan will pause on Tuesday to remember those who died in the March 11, 2011 earthquake and tsunami. They'll hold ceremonies and observe a moment of silence. And as we look back on the day, we want to note that some viewers may find certain images upsetting. The magnitude 9 earthquake off northeastern Japan three years ago triggered waves higher than 10 meters. The tsunami hit wide areas in the Pacific coast of Tohoku and Kanto regions. The National Police Agency says more than 18,500 people were killed or went missing in the disaster. Nearly 3,000 more died while evacuated from their homes. Over a quarter million people were still in temporary housing as of this February, according to the government. Many survivors have no choice, as the development of higher ground for relocation plans lags behind schedule. Three reactors melted down at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant following the tsunami. It remains unclear how much radioactive material was released from the reactors. The operator of the plant is struggling to manage growing amounts of radioactive water used to cool nuclear fuel in the reactors. The decommissioning of the Fukushima plant will take as long as 40 years, and there will be many challenges in that Shipping long Japanese process. Japanese organized crime syndicates is declining. It's fallen below 60,000 for the first time in more than two decades. The National Police Agency says the number dropped to about 58,600 last year. It's the lowest number since an anti-organized crime law was introduced 22 years ago. The agency says an increasing number of middle-ranking gangsters in major syndicates left their organizations along with lower-ranking members. But the agency also says the number of criminal cases in which crime groups attacked ordinary citizens rose to 23 in 2013. The figure was 21 the year before. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe says he's determined to speed up the rebuilding of areas affected by the earthquake and tsunami three years ago. Abe spoke one day before the third anniversary of the disaster. <laughs> Over the past year, the pace of reconstruction started picking up after a long delay. But it's undeniable that many people continue living as evacuees. Abe said the government would move about 200 communities to higher ground and build more than 10,000 public housing units for survivors. He said the work would be done by March 11th of next year.
I'm hoping that the year ahead will allow people to feel that reconstruction is making real progress. I'm determined to make it happen. Kabe said it's important not only to rebuild but to address problems such as population decline, the aging of society and what he called a hollowing out of industry. He said the government would work to create a new Tohoku region that will serve as a model for Japan and the rest of the world. Abe convened a cabinet meeting to discuss reconstruction efforts. The ministers decided to lift an evacuation order for an area around the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Residents of the Miyakoji district in Tamura City can return home next month. The ministers also said a local expressway should be completed in about a year. Construction has been suspended for parts of the road due to high radiation levels. We must speed up rebuilding efforts further, keeping in mind the lessons of the disaster and looking towards the future. Abe also said it is important to support the livelihoods of long-time evacuees through measures such as mental care for children. The NHK survey has found that most people in Japan still have serious misgivings about nuclear power three years on from the March 2011 disaster. NHK's Broadcasting Culture Research Institute conducted the nationwide survey late last year. Among 3,600 people, 68% responded. People were asked if they are concerned about the possibility of nuclear accidents that could affect those living in the area. 37% said they were very concerned and 50% said they were somewhat concerned. 14% said they had little or no concern. The survey also asked about restarting those nuclear reactors that are now offline. 44% said they should not be restarted. Another 44% were undecided and only 11% said the reactors should go into operation again. Asked about how the government should deal with existing nuclear reactors, 46% said the number should be reduced. 30% said all of them should be demolished. That number was 10 percentage points higher than the figure two years ago. And 22% said the number of reactors should be maintained at the current level. Only 1% said new reactors should be added. The survey also asked if people if people they were worried about the situation at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. 95% said yes, while only 5% said they had little or no concern. Researchers at the NHK Institute say conditions at Fukushima Daiichi have likely influenced public opinion about the future of nuclear energy in the country. Millions of people in Japan have spent the past three years worrying to different degrees about the health effects of radiation. Their concern is particularly strong in Fukushima Prefecture, the location of the damaged nuclear plant. Residents there are still debating whether it's safe to live in certain areas. A grassroots organization has launched an online radiation map to help them make informed decisions. NHK World's Ryo Asami shows us how it works. A do-it-yourself workshop is underway in downtown Tokyo. People from around the capital are here to learn how to build their own radiation measuring device. I've never used a soldering iron, not even once. I wasn't very confident at first, but it's actually quite interesting. I'm proud to be part of the project. Uh, it's something that is uh, it's important for everyone. The workshop is led by Peter Franken, a Dutch engineer who has been in Japan for more than 20 years. 
after the accident, Franken was struck by the lack of information about radiation, giving people access to their own monitoring device would allow them to make informed decisions. We created it so that people could measure radiation on their own. And the problem uh, was that we wanted to measure everywhere, so we had to come up with a way to do that. And the way we're doing that is, is we made the system so that it can be used while people are driving or bicycling or walking. The Geiger counter is coupled with a GPS to keep track of its location. The system is funded by donors around the world with technical support from engineers in and outside Japan. Franken and his group frequently visit Fukushima Prefecture to collect radiation data. We have a measurement, two measurement systems that are sitting outside. One is uh, connected to this monitor here, so we can see in the car, you can see what the radiation level is outside. The data from all monitoring devices is uploaded on a public website which can be visualized on the map. A close-up view of the map reveals individual measurements. The monitoring devices are designed to take a spot reading every 5 seconds. That's one measurement every 5 to 10 meters for someone on foot. Radiation levels are color-coded. Blue indicates a low reading, while red and orange highlight the more contaminated areas. The highest readings appear in yellow. They overlap with the evacuated areas around the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. The Japanese government spent much money installing the monitoring post in Fukushima Prefecture. This post collects samples continuously over 24 hours. You can see the information in real time on the government's website. The prefecture is dotted with a network of more than 3,000 government monitoring posts. The static devices give a general idea of radiation levels, but they don't keep track of local variations between them. And for some residents, the system is not precise enough. Toshikazu Watanabe lives in Koryama, about 55 kilometers from Fukushima Daiichi. After the accident, he was so worried about radiation, he considered evacuating the area. Koryama is a large city. We all need to understand the situation in the specific area where we live. When he learned about the project, Watanabe asked Franken to help measure radiation levels near his house. The readings were lower than what he expected, and he decided to stay. On this day, Franken's team is installing a sensor outside the office of Watanabe's company. Yes, so this will be visible to everybody on the internet, and if there is anything that changes, it will be visible too. It's very important that we ourselves find out the radiation level around us and how it's changing. Franken sees the device and the monitoring network as a way of empowering people. The worst decision is a decision that is based uh, not on data but on, uh, on a rumor or, or, or the wrong uh, assessment of the situation. So uh, by publishing the maps, by publishing the data, uh, it really is about creating uh, transparency and uh, openness about what's happening and then that's the best way to take action. Okay, let's look at this. Franken's network has spread beyond Fukushima with more than 100 volunteers measuring radiation across Japan. He hopes more people will join the monitoring effort to improve it even further. Ryo Asami, NHK World, Fukushima. Their network's radiation map can be accessed on their website at safecast.org.